Okay, so in this lecture we're going to discuss the visceral motor system. And what I mean by the visceral motor system, I'm referring to the autonomic nervous system. So we've already talked about some of the different divisions. So in my previous lecture, I talked about the somatic motor division, which is whenever we're referring to the peripheral nerves that are allowing us for muscle contractions. The somatic sensory part is where we activate some of our um, cutaneous receptors that are found in the skin and that information gets sent to the brain. So the next division of the peripheral nervous system that we're discussing is going to be the visceral motor system. So when I say visceral motor, visceral, visceral is referring to the organs, motor is referring to the direction in which the impulse is traveling. So if I say motor, another term for that is what? Not afferent, it's efferent, yes. So efferent signals that are going away from the central nervous system. Excellent. Okay. So that leads me to my schematic over here. So the visceral motor system is divided into two main regions or two main parts. So you have the sympathetic nervous system and also the parasympathetic nervous system. So there are a couple of different catchphrases that we use to describe both of them. So one that you're probably familiar with already is the sympathetic nervous system. We call that the fight or flight response. For the parasympathetic, uh, one of them is the rest and digest, or another one is the feed and breed. Yeah, so let's talk about what the effect is depending on which system it is that you're going to um, stimulate or activate and what their effect is. Okay, so, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and like talk about some of those different things first. So for the parasympathetic nervous system, right, I've already mentioned that it's for um, rest and digest or feed and breed. So what happens with the pupils is that, so here's like the eye model. And so what will happen is the pupil is the black part in the middle. So what will happen is it's what's known as constriction. So we'll write that here. So pupils, they constrict. In contrast, actually I'm going to do this in red. So the pupils, they constrict. And then for the salivary glands, because we're activating parasympathetic, if I say feed and breed, what do you think? Are we going to activate them or are we going to inhibit the salivary glands? Yeah, we're going to activate them. So we have our thick mucus that's um, produced for the salivary glands. So then what do you think is going to happen to the heart rate? After you have a meal, right, you're just sitting at the house and you're relaxing after your meal, what happens to your heart rate? Does it go up or does it go down? down so there's a decrease in our heart rate and then for the lungs what will happen is there will be um, constriction right because we don't need to get a lot of oxygen um, into the lungs and into the because based off of the circumstances right you're just relaxing you don't need to be breathing in a bunch of air um, so for the intestines are we going to increase that or inhibit that increase yeah so we're going to increase the motility so increase the motility of here. For the urinary bladder, you need the parasympathetic nervous system to be engaged. Um, so this is what allows urine output. Okay, so the last one is for um, reproductive. So for, for males, this, you have to have the male, so for this parasympathetic, you have the male erection, for the female, you also have the erection as well as vaginal secretions. So um, if, you, if you've also heard of morning wood, right? So um, if a man wakes up with an erection. So the reason that is the case, why that happens, is because after a REM cycle, right, after you have some deep sleep, when you wake up in the morning, are you, which system is going to be engaged? Right? Obviously the parasympathetic, right? Because you're in your relaxed state. So these are all of the different 
<clears throat> um, effects that it have for the parasympathetic. And so with, um, with that being said, let's contrast and see how that relates to the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so pupils, are they gonna constrict or are they gonna dilate? Dilate. dilate. So before I go on and um, start elaborating on some of these things, what type of example would we use a sympathetic nervous system? What's like the first one that people always talk about? So fight or flight, so what system would that? So if you're like literally like about to get into a fight or if you're like running, if you see a bear, you're running from a bear, running for a tiger or something like that. What was that? Endocrine. Well, I'm just saying like from a situational standpoint in which, yeah, like life or death, right? Yeah, no, I wasn't getting, no, I wasn't getting into that detail, but just generally speaking, it's, you know, life or death, like serious situations. Like for instance, the Travis Scott concert. Yeah. Yeah. Sympathetic nervous system is definitely going to be engaged based off of what all went down there. Okay. So pupils, they dilate. So salivary glands, we're not worried about breaking down food, digesting food. We're not worried about it at the time. Heart rate, we're going to have increase in heart rate. There's also going to be dilation of the airways for the lungs because we need to get more oxygen to the blood tissues, right? So you can run away from that bear or you can try to get the heck out of that concert, right? So you need to get the airways need to dilate, so that way we can pump the blood out faster and oxygenate the blood at a quick, at a quick rate. Okay, are we worried about digesting food? No, so there's decreased motility. For the urinary bladder, so we're gonna inhibit that. We don't wanna have any urine output. And then for reproductive, um, so for males, this is what causes ejaculation. All right, so this is so this is the beginning. This is the end. Um, so ejaculation, and then um, with females, uh, this is also climax. So vaginal contractions. Okay, so that concludes um, visceral motor as far as parasympathetic and sympathetic. What are the different effects? But then now we need to discuss um, some of the particular um, details of how all of this happens. Okay, so one of the first topics that we need to understand is what is the difference between pre and post ganglionic neurons? So if we compare this, this would be a lot similar to some of the topics that we've already discussed because we've already learned about cell bodies, where their locations are for ascending tracts, for descending tracts. Right, where they like synapse with each other. So this is a similar thing here, but we just term them a little bit differently. Okay, but we're gonna learn where the cell bodies are of these particular neurons, and then also the neurotransmitters that are actually released in between each of them. Okay, so the first one is the, um, we'll start with parasympathetic. So the cell body for the preganglionic neuron, it's found within the brainstem. So um, we'll talk about the specifics, but the cell body is found there. And then the neurotransmitter that's released is what's known as acetylcholine. So that's released um, at this for connect, or the communication between the pre and the post. So then for the postganglionic neuron, that's what's going to come out, and then that's, it'll synapse with the effector, with the organ itself, and then it'll release acetylcholine. Okay. So that's for these. So um, it's a little bit different when you compare parasympathetic with sympathetic because the preganglionic, um, the cell body of the preganglionic neuron is found within the lateral horns of, of the um, spinal cord. And then for the postganglionic, it's found within the sympathetic ganglia. So I'm going to elaborate here on like what I mean by this part, but Generally speaking, right, we know where the brainstem is, right? The brainstem is this particular region. And so, and we know that the sympath where the lateral horns are, right? That's within the spinal cord. So this is the reason why they also call the parasympathetic the craniosacral division 
And for sympathetic, they call this the thoracolumbar, based off of the region of where the neurons are coming out, the axons are coming out of. Okay, they're different particular locations. So for here, once again, parasympathetic, here within the brainstem, and then also here in the sacral region, compared to um, the thoracolumbar, which is all within this particular region right there. Okay? All right. So, um, let's talk about, let's go into the details of the parasympathetic nervous system. So I've already mentioned that some of the nuclei are found within the brainstem, and so some of the particular, um, we've learned about some of these different cranial nerves, and so this is where the nuclei is gonna be found. So within the midbrain, there's a nuclei for cranial nerve three. So what is the name of cranial nerve three? Yeah, so it's oculomotor. So oculomotor. Okay, and so what happens is the, what's known as the pupillary reflex. So we're gonna learn the details of like how this happens because you stimulate the optic nerve, which is um, sensory, it synapses with the oculomotor because that's what causes the um, pupils to um, constrict. Okay, so then within the medulla, there are the nuclei for three different cranial nerves. So this is cranial nerve seven. So this is the facial. And when this is engaged, um, what happens, it stimulates the release of tears, okay? So that's within the medulla. And then you also have a cranial nerve nine, which is known as the glossopharyngeal, which stimulates the release of saliva. So then the last one, which is also found within the medulla is cranial nerve 10. So this is the vagus or the vagus. And this is what, so the postganglionic um, neurons will travel out and then synapse at these particular regions where they're going to release acetylcholine and then have their effect as far as like decreasing heart rate, the lungs, the intestines, and all of these different um, particular parts. Okay? All right, so that's it for the parasympathetic um, division. So I wanna point it, I wanna point it out to you here on, um, so brain stem, so no, not yet. So parasympathetics, I don't have the brain model with me here, but let's move on to the um, sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so for this one, I've already mentioned that the cell body of the preganglionic neuron is found within the lateral horns. So that's what's found here within this spinal cord model. These are the lateral horns. So remember, the cell bodies of motor neurons are found in the ventral horns. The cell bodies of the visceral motor are found here. So somatic motor, visceral motor, and then this is for um, somatic sensory, typically, okay, which is in the dorsal horns. Okay, so it comes out. So we're gonna follow the route of where it comes from. So that's what I have drawn here. So this is a cross section of the spinal cord. And so you have to remember that this is what's behind the different vertebra. All right, so this would be a vertebra. This is an intervertebral disc. And so this is um, within the spinal canal. Okay, where it's traveled, the vertebral canal. And so I'm gonna show you here the torso model and everything to show some of the different structures, but we need to understand the basic schematic of how this happens. So the cell body of the visceral motor neuron is in the lateral horn for the sympathetic nervous system. So it comes out and it goes through the ventral, um, through the ventral root and then it comes down this way and then it comes out through this particular region. So I'm gonna write this as, I'll do it in purple. So this number one is known as the white communicans. So then from there, it then goes into this part. So I'm gonna call this structure number two. So this is known as the sympathetic ganglia. 
So at the sympathetic ganglia, this is within the peripheral nervous system. So what's the definition of ganglia? Nuclear. Yeah. Not nuclei, but it's cell, cell bodies. It's clusters of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. So that's why they call it the sympathetic ganglia. So that's the sympathetic ganglia here. So this is where the postganglionic, the cell body is within the sympathetic ganglia. So it comes out through the white communicans, the axons, then it goes down to here where the sympathetic ganglia is, and then the cell body of the postganglionic neuron is here, and then the axon goes up, and then it goes through structure three, which is known as the gray communicans. So then the axons go up right here, and, and it's in red. And then that's what comes out here through what's known as number four, which is known as the ventral rami once again. So it goes out, and then it'll then go to its whatever the particular effector is, whether it's um, the pupils, the salivary glands, and, and all the rest of these particular structures. Okay, so remember, once again, cell bodies found in the lateral horns for preganglionic, postganglionic, and the sympathetic ganglia. The difference between the two is for postganglionic, we're secreting norepinephrine instead of acetylcholine, which is secreted by the um, parasympathetic. Okay, so the last thing is um, I'm going to show you on the spinal cord model some of the things that I was just talking about as far as the um, ganglia and stuff. Okay, so here on the spinal cord model, so what I remember is um, GW, so like George Washington, president. So this is the gray communicans, which is 29, and this is the white communicans, which is there, number 30. Okay, so remember that this is where the axons of the visceral motor neuron are coming down, and where are they going to synapse with? With the sympathetic ganglia. So this here is a torso model. What you're looking at is the thorax region. So within the thorax region, this is, so K, that's where the sympathetic ganglia is. So that's where the cell bodies for the postganglionic neuron are going to be found. So they'll synapse there, and then it comes back out this way, right here, because this is representing the gray and the white communicans, and then it comes out this way to go to its um, effector. Obviously, like the heart would be here, and then the lungs and everything, so you can kind of see like the organization of how this is coming out. Because remember, once again, for the sympathetic, it's the thoraco lumbar, because this is all within the thoracic region. Okay, so um, what's the other one? So the other one is structure M. So what is structure M? Yeah, so the greater um, the splanchic nerve. Yeah, splanchic. And then um, this is the intercostal nerve that's over here.